who do you believe on what's going to happen to the housing market? Because one half of the pendulum says we're crashing. It's coming. The crash is coming. The other half of the pendulum says if you don't buy now, you're going to miss out on these great prices. So why are you buying now? And then where's that in between? How many people are just saying, I don't know what's going to happen. And why would they say that versus the certainty of the it's crashing and the certainty of buy now because now's the best price to buy. Hi, my name is Nicole Black and I'm with the Living in Scottsdale channel and your Arizona Realtor. And I want to make sure this is clear that what we're going to do today is we're going to break down just one chunk basically um, of the aspect of both sides, okay, for you to make a better decision because at the end of the day, nobody does know. I, I will say that. They can say 100% it's going to crash, but they've been saying it's going to crash for the past two years. If you go back on articles, it's, it's basically just keep saying it till it actually happens and go, oh, I was right. So when's that going to be? 10 years from now? Two years from now? Next month? I don't know. But they've been saying it now for a couple of years. Then you've also heard buy now, buy now, buy now, because this is the best price. Who was right in that one? Well, currently those people have said by now, two years ago, we're right. A year ago, we're right. A couple months ago, we're actually right. So where do we start to get information? And then there's people who, like me, I'm like, I don't know. Because not, it, all we know is what we do know. And right now we know that supply is very low. And I know so many people are like, well, interest rates are rising. People, affordability is out there. Yes, but the inventory that would have to come flooding into the market right now to finally make prices crash, not, not depreciate, not correct, not come down, not saying that, crash. That would take a lot. It would take a lot of inventory. We are so low. And I keep repeating this over and over. And I still have people say, but, 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 but I go, it's still, I, I get demands come down. It has. I know affordability has come down, but inventory is still down too. There are multiple factors that play into economics and the most baseline of it and the foundation is supply and demand. Yes, demand is down, but so still is supply. So that's why we're not crashing. But let's dive into at least some of the details, especially with the national news and all that stuff, and make it specific to Arizona. So this is Living in Scottsdale. It is an Arizona page, so I am not talking about nationally, but I want to bring down that to like a funnel to where are we here, where you may buy, or where you may live, and where I live. So Forbes, and I could have gotten this from so many different places on the internet. I just want to take one little nugget and I want to just dissect it for Arizona. So nationally, they're saying the current rate of conditions, it's no wonder why year over year existing home sales have come basically come down by 0.7% for major U.S. regions, posting declines according to the National Association of Realtors. All right, let's look at Arizona. And I want you to see the specific graph. And this is basically our contract ratio. What is our contract ratio graph showing us? It's showing each week how many houses are available, so active listings, versus ones that have gone under contract that are for, that should be going closing and no longer available for sale. So active versus under contract. I want you to look what this graph is so telling to what we've been through the past couple years. So from 2020 to 2022, what is that? That's right here. What we like to call this or is the unicorn years. It's a unicorn. It's an abnormality. It is not a cyclical, normal flow, a trend. What looks like a trend to you? Would it be more 2014 to 2019? Yeah, that's, that is a seasonal trend. You can see the highs, the lows, the dips. They're fairly stagger, but they're pretty consistent. And then where do you see us now in 2023? Does this look like a unicorn here? No, it looks like it's actually kind of adjusting to the normal seasonality that we experience in real estate in the greater Phoenix area. Nowhere else in the United States, I'm just talking about greater Phoenix. So week 41, we have... I'm going to go with 40, 41, um, cause they're relatively pretty close, obviously cause they're week to week. We had 9,871 active listings in October 14th of this week, week 41 under contract with 4,782. 
that is a ratio of 48.4. So almost would you guys, let's just say like 50%, let's use that as our average. So for all the listings that are on, half go under contract that week. We are going to skip the unicorn years and we're gonna go to 2019 right before the unicorn started. And we're gonna go 52, 42, I'm sorry, um, because it's pretty similar. So uh, in that week, we had 8,175 under contract and active, we had 11,318. So you can see actually buyer activity and demand was already increasing before we went into 2020. Um, we were at 72. So more houses that were active sold the week in October of 2019 than now. Let's look at 2018. This is so interesting. So 2018, the week around 40. Oh, I, I have Midwest fingers, you guys, I'm just saying. Okay, week 40, it means I, I can't play basketball or, or palm one. They're just not made for that. All right, so week 40, we had a contract ratio of about 50%. So let's look at now 2017. What did week 40-ish look like? All right, so we had about 2017, 50, about 50%. 2016, we have, we got, we, we got this. We got this, stick with me, stick with me. All right, what do we have? 2016, about 50%. Now, 2015, we had about 42. And I can tell you right now in 2014, we had about 30. So that 50 marker for the three years prior to going into the crazy years was a very good staple. Remember, we were still coming out of the 2008, 2010, and then starting to come up with our demand again, those years of 2012 to 2014. You can see 2015, our demand is there. We're picking up, we have sales. Now we're at a 50% contract ratio. So we're recovering from the 2008. And now we're in kind of a, a normal yet somewhat uh, balanced market-ish between 2016 to 2018, 2019. And then the unicorn year it happened. And now we are back at a normal contract ratio of an average of a 50%. So again, active listings versus that about 50 go under contract. So the national news says, oh my gosh, it's slowing down. It's slowing down in all these cities for these going under contracts. But we just came out of unicorn years. And we're in an insane situation where appreciation has gone up dramatically from 2020 and went so high in three years and interest rates went up faster than they ever have before. And it made us an almost a, a balanced in a sense with our contract ratio market versus uh, crashing it or anything else. So even though, yes, they've come down, but they came down from years of that were just unbelievably crazy our unicorn. So we're not crashing at this time. I do want to also show this um, of all the cities. And this is why if you are looking in um, Scottsdale, Gilbert, Mesa, Chandler, Buckeye, Peoria, they're all different. So look at this right here. So how do you know whether your specific city, because I can say greater Phoenix right now is still in the baby sellers market, but is all of Phoenix? No. Nope. There's actually about, I think it's about three to four that are just tipping into a buyer's market right now. Yep, three to four are tipping into a buyer's market. But then there's other ones that are still in insane seller's market. So even though we're looking at Phoenix as a whole, it doesn't mean your specific area where you want to buy is going to be that way. So these numbers are really, really important for your agent to know, to relay to you, so you understand what you're going up against. So you can see, for example, right now the percent change of annual average price per square foot now versus last year. Uh, Paradise Valley is up from last year. Scottsdale up, Carefree, Real Verde up, Fountain Hills. What's down? Everybody else from there. So you can see everybody is down a little bit, but is this significant? No, these changes are very, very nominal, not huge. I, I would say though 13.2% for Paradise Valley is pretty big. That one actually is significant. But everybody else, you have 1.1, 0.6, 2.9, not very, very significant. Um, 
and that's going to affect but again I just want to show you that because cities are very important when you're looking in them and then medium coma of days on market what we like to look for is not the specific what they say so even though right here it says we'll go over a little bit that 34 days average on market okay for the median we don't want to say okay so your house is gonna average gonna sell in 34 days what we like to look at is the trend the trend tells us something because days on market can actually be manipulated by the agents themselves so when they switch something to pending it stops the count but if they switch it to under contract expecting backups the count keeps going so that can close so when do they actually make it pending do they make it pending after the home inspection do they make it pending after the appraisal do they make it pending when they feel like they're just secure finally that's actually going to close the day of we don't know so that keeps the clock going when they finally do make it pending so these can be manipulated so we like to look as more an overall trend in it versus the specific days as well and you can see right now where are we we are flat so days, the average median days on market is not changing um, recently at all. It's staying very slight, which reports back to my last report that we are slow down and we're more stagnant than crashing at this moment in Arizona's greater Phoenix metro area. Currently, we still are seeing in October a 40% of closings do have seller pay concessions. So what a lot of people are doing right now is they're almost getting their list price. Um, I think we're at 98% for list price closings. Again, Greater Phoenix, it may be different in different city, but Greater Phoenix. Um, and they're going in and saying, okay, I'll give you close to your price that you're asking, but I want some money to buy down my rate because I'm going to actually potentially, and you have to talk to your lender, but potentially how far they can help buy it down with seller concessions would be way less expensive for you than getting the price lowered on the home. So long term, you can save more money on a 30 year mortgage if you get that rate down versus $10,000 on price, maybe even 20. I'm not your lender. I don't know. That's a, a discussion for you and them. But you can see that almost 40% of people are getting them with the average of 8,000. But I can tell you it is different per city. So if you want to have those conversations, just let me know. Okay, so I hope this helped give you a little bit of a perspective of a deep dive into what's happening in the Phoenix greater metro area. And I, if you have a specific question about a certain city that you're looking at, that you want to report for, we can do a Zoom call. I will specifically take you through that city so you will know, or even zip code. I would just say the zip code. We can do that. And then you can have a really good idea and be prepared on your, you know, what to expect to pay, seller concessions, how many are going over list, under list, and know what you're dealing with price per square foot. Uh, I hope this helped you again. My name is Nicole Black. Please, again, if you felt that this information was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe because this is what we do. We empower you with information. We're going to give you steps, luxury home tours, desert living, all that right here. I don't know where you are in the world right now, but I hope you're doing amazing. And don't ever forget, we're always here for you.